Baruchim Haboim, welcome everyone. We're about to begin together on Daf Yudalid Amr Aleph, the last two lines from the two dots. The Mishnah discusses where you can make interruptions between the paragraphs of Kriyashma. It says, according to the Tanakhama, you can even make an interruption between Vayoymer, the third paragraph of Kriyashma, and Emes Vyatsiv. According to Rabbi Yehuda Loyafsik, says the Gemara, Om Rabbi Abo, Om Rabbi Yochanan, Halacha Kerabi Yehuda, Do Amar Ben Elokechem Le Emes Vyatsiv Lo Yafsik. Indeed, the Halacha like Rabbi Yehuda, you cannot make an interruption between the last paragraph of Kriyashma and you say the word Elokechem. You, you can't make an interruption between that and Emes Vyatsiv. You must say directly Elokechem Emes. Om Rabbi Abo, Om Rabbi Yochanan, My time, the Rabbi Yehuda. What is his rationale? What's his reasoning? Dixiv, he has a pasuk. It says, Bahashem Elokim Emes. And therefore, if a person does not say Hashem Elokim Emes, it doesn't say Hashem Elokechem in our case, in the Kriyashma Emes. Instead, he is Shohe, and he makes a pausation between those words. Then it can imply Chas Veshtom the opposite. Choyzer Ve'oimer Emes or Eino Choyzer Ve'oimer Emes. Ask the Gemara if a person is waiting for the Shliach Tzibur to complete the Kriya Shema. When he goes now and begins to say his bracha of Ga'al Yisrael with Yatsi V'nochem V'kayim, does he also say the word Emes together with V'yatsi V'nochem V'kayim V'yoshar? Says the Gemara, it's a machlokes. Omer Rabbi Abohu, Omer Rabbi Yoichanan, Choyzer V'oimer Emes. According to this opinion of Rabbi Yoichanan, you would, yes, go ahead and say Emes a second time when you say V'yatsi V'nochem. Rabbi Omar, Einoi Choyzer Ve'oimer Emes. You do not do that. You already said Emes in the Kriyashma. Now you will say Ve'yatsi Ve'nochem Ve'kayim Ve'yoshar. Says the Gemara, Ahu Denoch is Kamei the Rabbi. There was a Shliach Tzibur that was Yoreid. In the times of the Gemara, the Shliach Tzibur daven in the lower place. And they therefore call it Yoreid. That the Shliach Tzibur would go to a lower place, a place to daven. On behalf of the Tzibur, as the Shliach Tzibur. And as we know, we learned in the first parak of the Gemara, Hashem. there's an Indian Davka, the Davin in a lower place, and therefore the Shliach Tzibur would Davin in a lower place. So here, the Gemara says, Ahu Denachis Kamei the Rabba, the one who went down in front of Rabba, referring to the Shliach Tzibur, Sham E Rabba, Doma Emes, Emes Trezimni. Rabbi overheard, he heard him say, Emes twice. Says the Gemara, Omar Rabbi called Emes, Emes, Tafse Lahai. He took the words that he was rogil to say of Emes and he repeated them twice unnecessarily. And therefore, Rabbi again is the Shita that you do not repeat Emes. Omar Rav Yosef, Kamal How great is the following teaching? In regards to the third paragraph of Kriyashma, Dechi Omar Rav Shmuel by Yehuda Omar, Ame b'ma'arovo arvis. They used to say in Eretz Yisrael the following teach, teaching in regards to the tefillah of arvis. Daber el b'nei Yisrael v'amart alei. And they would begin the third paragraph of the Kriyashma. And then they would skip and say, Ani Hashem lokechem emes. What is the greatness of this teaching? We already learned that a person begins, then he should continue and complete the paragraph of Kriyashma. You'll say that the words of Amarta Alem is not yet considered to be a haschalo of saying the third paragraph of Kriyashma. But we already learned in the name of Rav that the Amarta Alehim is a Haskhola. So therefore you should have completed it. They hold in the West, in Eretz Yisrael, Even though he said the word Amarta Alehim, that's not considered to be a beginning of the third paragraph because he hasn't mentioned Tzitzis, which is the essence of the third paragraph of Kriyashma. So long as he didn't mention Tzitzis, then it's considered not to be a Haskhola. Omar Abaye Hilkach Anan Aschuli Maschalinon. The Kamaschali B'Marava. 
We therefore, in Tefilas Arvis, do begin the third paragraph of Kriya Shema. The Kivan Das Chalinon, Migmar Nami Gamrinon. But once we begin it, we say the entire paragraph of Vayoymer. The Ho'omar Rav Kahanam Rav, Lo Yasil, you shall not begin, meaning to say, you don't have a chiv to say Vayoymer. But, Vim Hischil Goyim, but if you do begin it, then you should say the entire paragraph without skipping. Chiyah Barav Omar. Chiyah Barav said the following, Omar Ani Hashem Lokechem, Tzorich Lomar Emes, if a person says Ani Hashem Elokeichem, means the third paragraph, he says the end, he says the words Ani Hashem Elokeichem, he needs to say Emes. Because he says Ani Hashem Elokeichem, like we said before, we passed my Rabbi Yehuda, you have to make sure that the postic by Hashem Elokeim Emes is made clear. But if he did not say the words at the end of the third paragraph, Ani Hashem Elokeichem, then Eino Tzorich Lomar Emes, he also does not need to say then Emes together. Ask the Gemara, wait a second, we need to then mention Zichiyas Mitzrayim. So even if you don't say the third paragraph, because the third paragraph of Ayoimer is predominantly dealing with Sitzis, and Sitzis, according to this Mando Omar, is not a mitzvah at night. It's called Mitzvah Hashem, and you cannot see the Sitzis at night. But what about mentioning Yitzit Mitzrayim? And therefore, if you're not going to mention the third paragraph, the, the, the brach of Ga'al Yisrael, Emes Ve'emuna, so then, and you'll mention the third paragraph, Ayoimer, then what about Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim? Says the Gemara, the Omar Hochi. He says the following, in regards to them being able to Zorich Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim. He says, Moidim anachnu loch Hashem alokeinu. We thank you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shehotzei sonu me'eretz Mitzrayim umibes avodim. You took us out of Mitzrayim and you were poid to us, you redeemed us. And you perform miracles for us and great strengths that you displayed on the yam when you split the yam for us. And we, 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 we sing to you. So some explain this to mean that after this, they continue on saying, and they continue with the bracha, Baruch HaTo Hashem Ga'al Yisrael. So therefore there is a mentioning to satisfy the Zechiras Yetzirah Mitzrayim. Om Rabbi Yoshua ben Korcho, Lama Kodma Parshish Shema. Here the Gemara brings a tzitut, a quotation from our Mishnah. The Mishnah discusses why the order of the Kriya Shema, that the first paragraph of Shema should precede V'hayim Shamoah. So Rabbi Yoshua ben Korcho teaches us because the first paragraph of Shema discusses Kabbalah's Om Malchus Shamayim, and therefore that precedes the second paragraph, Vahayim Shamoya, which discusses Kabbalah's Om Mitzvahs. Says the Gemara, Tanya, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai Oimer. We have a bride that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai taught, and he said the following, Bidin Hu, Sheyaktim Shema Levahayim Shamoya. It's correct to first have Shema, and then say the paragraph Vahayim Shamoya afterwards. Why? Because Shema discusses Lilmod, learning, as it said, Vidibar Tabom. And the second paragraph of Hayim Shamoy discusses teaching, as it says, Vidimartem Osom Es Benechem. The Hayim Shamoy Levayimer, and by Hayim Shamoy should proceed Vayimer. Why? Because the second paragraph discusses teaching, as we just said, as it says, um, and the third paragraph of Vayomer discusses doing, as it says, and you shall perform the mitzvot. Ask the Gemara, Otu Shema, Lilmod Isbei, Lelame Velasus Lesbei. Are you going to say that the first paragraph of Kriya Shema only has the aspect of learning, but not the aspect of teaching and doing? The Hoksi Vishinantam, which refers to then teaching. It says, Vishinantam Levonech, you shall teach your children, refers to your students. Ukshartem Uksavtem, it says, the mitzvah of mezuzah, and the mitzvah of, and the mitzvah of tefillin. Vesu, and further, Vahayim Shamoya, the second paragraph, Lelamed Hu the Isbei, Velas is Lesbei. It only has the aspect of teaching, but not the aspect of doing. Says the Gemara of it says Ukshartem Uksavtam. There it discusses also the aspect of doing because it talks about tefillin and also talks about mezuzah. 
This is what Rabbi Shimba Yochai was saying. It's correct to have Shema preceded by Yem Shamoya. Because Shema has all three aspects learning, teaching, and doing. And Hayim Shema should precede by Yomer. Because the second paragraph of Krishna has the pa- paragraph of Vahim Shemot, which discusses teaching and doing. Whereas the third paragraph of Vayoymer only discusses Lasus. Ask the Gemara, the Tepuk Leib Mid Rabbi Yoshub and Korcha. Why didn't Rabbi, why doesn't Rabbi Shemba Yochai learn more easily like Rabbi Yoshub and Korcha? Says the Gemara, he does. Chanda Vaoy Omar. He was saying the aspect of what Rabbi Shur ben Karcha said, that's true. But in addition to that, there's another reason why there should be this Seder in Kriyashma. Chada, first of all, he explains, Kedeshi Kabbal Alav O Malchus Shomayim Tchilo. Ve'achakach, he Kabbal Alav O Mitzvis. Just like Rabbi Shur ben Karcha taught us. Ve'od, and further, Mishum Di'iz Bahani Mili Achronaiso. Because there's also these additional aspects that we just mentioned. Once again, the first paragraph of Shema discusses learning, teaching, and doing. The second paragraph t- t- discusses teaching and doing. But the third paragraph only talks about doing. So therefore, it should be in this order of Shema, Vahim Shamoy, and then Vayoymer. Says the Gemara in regards to then wearing tefillin and saying Kriyashma. Rav, Mash- Rav Mashi Yodei. The Kora Kriyashma. The Anach Tfilin Vitsali. Rav, he washed his hands, he recited Kriyashma, he put on Tfilin, and then he Davin. In that order. In other words, again, he first recited Kriyashma, and then he put on Tfilin. Says the Gemara, Vehechi Ovid Hochi. How did he do such a thing? The Hatanya, behold, it says in the following Braiso. Ha Choyfer Kuch Lemes Bakever. If a person is busy digging a, they used to dig a cave and then they would make partitions in that cave for Kavarim. If a person is involved in this mitzvah of digging up a grave site in order to prepare for somebody to be buried there, he's potter mi kriyashma, or mina tfila, or mina tfilin, or mi mitzvah sa amuras batayr. He's potter from kriyashma and other mitzvahs because after all, he's oisik ba mitzvah and potter mina mitzvah. The verse continues. He gives man Kriyashma. When Kriyashma time comes, Oile, he goes up from the place where he's digging. The night of he washes his hands. Umeniach tefillin v'kari Kriyashma umispalel. And then he puts on tefillin. And then he says Kriyashma and Davins. So the Gemara asks, first of all, there's an inconsistency with the Brisa. Hagufa kasho. Reisha omar potter. The sefer chayef. In the beginning of the Bryce, it states that a person who is digging up a grave, so that person is part of because we said, mitzvah. And then immediately after, the Bryce continues and says, when the time of Kriyashma comes, then he should put on tefillin and say Kriyashma. Says the Mohalo Kasho, Sefer betray v'reisha bechad, because the first part of the Bryce is talking about when he was alone, and therefore he had nobody to then relieve him. So he continued then, even though the time of Kriyashma came, he continued to dig, dig the gravesite in order to then uh, prepare for the mace. And there was still Isaac ben Mitzvah, Potter Minah Mitzvah. However, the Seif is discussing where there's two people involved. And therefore, one was digging, while the other one was able to say Kriyashma. And then they took turns to relieve the other one. Now the Gemara asked, Lin Yanenu, Mikol Makom Kashya Lerav. Nonetheless, it is going to be a difficulty on Rav because Rav, he first said Kriyashma and then put on the Tefillin. But over here in the Brisa, we see that the order is the opposite, that you first shall put on, you shall first say, should first put on Tefillin and then say Kriyashma with your Tefillin on you. Says the Gemara, Rav, ki Rabbi Yoshua ben Korcha Sviralei. Rav is of the opinion of Rabbi Yoshua ben Korcha that we saw in our Mishnah just earlier. The Omar, who said, O Malchu Shemayim Tchilo, V'achakach O Mitzvis. That Rabbi Yeshua Ben Korcha said, first we say 
Shema, because it's dealing with all Malchus Shemayim, and then Vayim Shamo, which is dealing with all mitzvahs. And therefore, Rav is like him in the fact that he first is Mikabah all Malchus Shemayim by saying Kriya Shema, and then he puts on his tefillin, which discusses the mitzvahs. Or Eimah the Omer Rabbi Yosheb ben Korcha asked the Gemara, when does Rabbi Yosheb ben Korcha say this din of the order? That's lahakdim kriya lekriya. That's in regard to then saying the order of saying reciting the kriya shema. But kriya laasiya. But then to have kriya precede the asiya. Right? Mishamas like who heard? Who said that he said such a thing? He wasn't discussing that at all. Says the Gemara Vesu and further, Mi Savar Lei Ki Rabbi Yosho Ben Karcha. Who said that Rav really holds like Rabbi Yosho Ben Karcha? Indeed, the Amar Rav Chia Bar Ashi Zimnin Sagi and Hava Kamina Kamei De Rav. He says I came many times before Rav. Umaktim and Rav first Umashi Yade. He washed his hands and Mevarech, and he would then say Birkas Hatayra. Umasni Lam Pirkin, and then he would teach us Tayra. And then he put on tefillin and then would say Kriyashma. So we see that Rav indeed did it in the correct order over here, just like the Brises states. And not like we want to suggest, maybe like Rabbi Yashum and Karcha. We see that this is what he did. He first put on tefillin and then said Kriyashma. Maybe you'll say, zman kriyashma. The only reason why he put on tefillin first over here and then said kriyashma because it was not yet the time to say kriyashma. It was too early. In Ken, if that's so, the Arav Bar Ashi. What was the edus? What was he coming to say in the name of Rav? If not, telling me to teach us the order that Rav did things. So the Gemara says, no, I have a suggestion what he was coming to say. He was coming to exclude the opinion that says you do not need to make a bracha of Birkaz HaTorah on Mishnah. And he was coming to say that, Rav, you see a precedent that you can even say a Birkaz HaTorah on Mishnah. Because there's a whole discussion like we saw in the first parak, what you say Birkaz HaTorah on. Now the Gemara goes back to the original question, Mikol Mokom Kashi Rav. Nevertheless, it's a Kasha on Rav because again, Rav initially was seen by first saying Kriyashma and then putting on Tefillin. And this Brisa and the latter, if you want to say the way that Rav was also behaving before, but certainly the Brisa says that you first, first put on Tefillin and then say Kriyashma. So we have a stereo with Rav. Or Rav is, is, is Nistar from the Brisa, says the Gemara, Shlucha Huda Avis. No, he really does put on Tfilin first and say Kriya Shema like the Brisa states. But he had a Shliach who was tardy, that was late in bringing him his Tfilin. And he saw that the time was getting late, he was going to miss Zman Shal Kriya Shema. So he first said Kriya Shema, and then once the Shliach came with his Tfilin, then he put on his Tfilin. Thank you.